Yo. Uh, one through nine. This is a Star Wars Episode Five, The Empire Strikes Back review. Um, so we are post Death Star here, uh, post original Death Star here. Um, the Empire is still in charge, has plenty more troops and, and just huge influence over the galaxy compared to the Rebels. Um, and they are now searching for the Rebel base again. Um, they end up finding it <clears throat> on Hoth. Uh, Hoth is a is a uh, ice world, snow planet, really cool planet, one of my favorite planets from like Star Wars Battlefront 2 to play in. Um, always really liked that planet. Um, so that's where the Rebels are held up. Um, we get a few things of Luke and, and Han are out in the, in the tundra. Um, not actually sure what they're looking for while they're out there, but they're out there on Tauntauns, uh, looking for something. Um, but, excuse me. Luke actually gets, um, attacked by this Yeti creature. Uh, I'm sure I know the name of it, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, and, um, almost dies, you know. But he able, he's able to cut the thing's arm off and... They, he ends up getting saved by Han. They stick... Han sticks him inside of the freaking Tauntaun. It dies. He cuts it open and puts Luke inside of it because it's warm. That always made me cringe. Me like, Ugh! Disgusting because when he cuts it, all the little intestines come out. It's nasty. He saved Luke. Um, and uh, Han and, and Leia are going back and forth because Han, again, is struggling with, um, I guess, his moral compass whether or not he wants to stick around with the rebellion or he just wants to go pay off Jabba and get that, you know, checked off of his worry list. But I actually can't blame Han here. I mean, if he really wants to be effective with the rebellion, he should probably try to get rid of all of his smuggling loose ends, you know? So I don't really blame him. I'm not really sure why Leia was on his case so hard about that when he could just go and... Even if he went with some rebels um, and uh, they would get rid of that and then they could come back. But anyways... Um, She's on his case about that. Uh, Luke's on his case about that. And, you know, even Chewie is kind of giving him some body language about it. Um, <clears throat> then they end up, right before he's about to leave, um, they find a probe droid and they go check it out. Turns out it's an uh, Imperial probe droid. Uh, it's just, you know, they were dropping out these droids all over the place trying to figure out um, where the rebel base was. Um... And uh, they, this is an indicator to know that the Empire knows where they are. So it's already evacuating. There's no way they can take on the Empire um, in this, I guess, in this situation. Um, the Empire deploys the AT-ATs, which are the gigantic walkers, um, iconic giant walkers, which is actually funny because if you've ever seen behind the scenes, they're actually, you know, like, I don't know, like, my, you can't really see because my screen's not wide enough, but they're not obviously that huge they're like remote control rc things it's pretty funny um or maybe they just move it like you know i don't know how they do it but uh, but they look awesome and they're they've always been awesome they're iconic i mean there's so many so many references to the to the star wars atat -AT walkers um i'm just thinking of one is uh captain america civil war when iron era uh, uh spider-man says have you ever seen that old movie, Empire Strikes Back? And they, they use the same method to take them down uh, as they take down Ant-Man when he's giant. <clears throat> but really cool combat scene. Probably the best, in my opinion, ground combat in the entire, or uh, in the uh, original trilogy. We didn't really get any, you know, Rebel vs. Empire combat at all in, uh, well, ground combat in uh, A New Hope. And there is a fight in the in the the Last Jedi, but it's not as good in my opinion. Um, so this is the best one. This is really the best of of the Rebels you'll see, as they have you know turrets and things. You know, they, they, it looks like they have like just generators. Like it's not fully set up. Obviously, they're kind of dug in trenches. Um, you know, they're on the run, so you know they have to kind of be able to pick up and leave at any instance. So bit of a, as the Rebels have always been, a bit of a ragtag operation here, excuse me, um, against this, you know, organized elite army, which is the Imperial Army, um, these giant walkers, so the uh, Rebels, they, they use these 
these ships, uh, they're, I don't think they're ships for space travel. I've never seen them in space travel. I know they're just, you know, you fly around the planet with them. I guess they're, they're not really, they're not speeders because they, they're off the ground. So I'm not really sure what they'd be called, but, um, they're in Battlefront as well. But what they do is, is they try to use, um, their blasters on, on these ships and, you know, it's not doing shit. Um, doesn't really make sense to be honest. Uh, they don't mention shields. Oh, well, actually, they do say they, their shields are too strong for blasters. They never show the shields. There's no, like, blue tint or anything or, or showing them turn the shields on unless I missed it. Um, so what they do, since the blasters aren't working, is they fire the tow hooks. I guess it, they pull something. Uh, like, for the regular function, I guess they're towing something. I don't know how they're towing in a spaceship. No idea. But they... Um, fire the tow hooks and it attaches to one of their legs and they fly around it and then eventually it gets all you know tangled up and it falls and then for some reason when it falls and they shoot it it blows up instantly so i'm not really sure how that happened because they didn't say anything about the shields are down or anything now that just blows up from two shots Mm. (laughs) wish they would have been a little bit more uh uh, you know, descriptive as to what happened to where it can blow up in two shots, why it couldn't when it was standing, I don't really know, but, you know, they get a couple of them, they're, they're only trying to hold off so that everyone can retreat, they're not trying to win this battle here, so, they end up retreating, the, all the rebel, you know, obviously some of them die, whatever, I'm sure not all of them made it, but, uh, the, the most, the most important rebels, you know, Akbar, Mon Mothra, Leia, they all, they escape, um, Leia, Han, Chewie, and C-3PO, and R2, no, just not R2, they escape on the uh, Millennium Falcon, um, but everybody else escapes on, you know, the big ships and everything. Um, Darth Vader shows up, and he's, you know, charging through, he actually almost catches Leia, Han, Chewie, and C-3PO, um, but Han just escapes in the nick of time, um, and uh, they are being chased by the Empire at this point, um, trying to escape. They go into an asteroid field. And, um, you know, I'll pick it up from there in a bit. But Luke is doing his own thing. He's a leader of a rebel squad. of He's think he's a Red Leader, I think, now or something like that. I think he was Red Leader. Because I think Red Leader died in the first, in the first one. So I think he's Red Leader now. Um, I could be wrong on that. I'm not 100% sure. It's kind of tough to decide, or not decide, but remember who's who when they're just yelling out, gold two, yellow three, red, you know, not yellow, but you know, you know what I mean? Um, anyway, he's in some type of leadership role with this squad of rebels in the X-Wings. Um, so he actually jumps in an X-Wing, or he gets shot down in the speeder, in the same speeders that they had the tow hooks. He gets shot down, well, not sh- yeah, shot down, basically. Um, it's, you know, plot armor, a lot of plot armor as his ship gets shot and he just flies into the snow rather than blow up like all the other ships do when they get shot, they blow up. Uh, there was plot armor in, in the fourth and now there's plot armor in this one. He sh- it should have blew up. There's no reason why it wouldn't have. It got, sh- he's, his partner got shot in the back. Luke didn't even know. He turns around he's calling for him. He's like, Hey, what? Oh, he's dead. Oh, <laughs> I guess the ship didn't even move. Um, and then it gets shot again, and he, you know, flies directly into the snow without it blowing up, Yet, let alone, or yet, other ships get shot, and they're just blowing up like crazy. Somehow he lives, but, um, I, plot armor gets on my nerves after Game of Thrones. Um, but, um, <clears throat> gotta say, stop saying, um, uh, so Luke actually takes out a walker, um, he uses his grappling hook. Flies up, slices the the inside or the 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 bottom of the ATAT and throws a grenade in there and falls and he blows one up. Um, so that was cool. Um, then from here, he how does he get back? Uh, I don't know how he. I forget how he gets back. Can't remember how he gets back, but somehow he gets back. Um, and he actually takes his X wing and he goes to Dagobah. Um, earlier in the movie, I forgot to mention, when Luke was um, stranded in, in the snow in the very beginning where Han had to find him, um, he had a vision of Obi-Wan telling him to go to Dagobah and find Yoda. So this is what he's doing. So it, it takes our characters two different paths. Luke and R2 go to Dagobah. 
and Han, che Chewie, Leia, and C-3PO are avoiding the Empire. Um, so, I'll pick it back up with Han, Chewie, Leia, and Chewbacca. Han, Chewie, Han, Chewie, Leia, and C-3PO, excuse me. Um, they're being chased by the Empire. Something's wrong with their uh, hyperdrive, so they're not able just to zip out of there. So they go into the um, asteroid field to try to avoid them. Uh, ends up they follow them. Uh, the TIE fighters do. A few of them get destroyed. Uh, Han's able to you know, do some tricky maneuvers. Uh, seasoned pilot, of course. And he ends up hiding in a uh, what he thinks is a trench or a crater inside of an asteroid. Um, turns out it's a fucking giant worm. <laughs> so that's funny. Uh, they go out to, to get some of these creatures called Gundarks. They look like giant bats or like Gligar from Pokemon, if you know what that is, kind of. But it's not purple. Um, anyway, they shoot them off and they're walking around and it's like, this doesn't feel like rock. <laughs> and it's a fucking tongue, I guess, or the inside of it, whatever. So, uh, Han shoots it geniusly. <laughs> he shoots the ground and it starts flipping out and it's like a mini earthquake. And I'm just imagining like, I, I, you know, it's this made, movie's made in like 80, I think it was 80. Yeah. 1980. So they're just probably going like this with the camera and, uh, you know, Carrie Fisher and, uh, Harrison Ford are like, whoa. So they're probably just like, like <laughs> the ground's perfectly stable. And I'm just picturing them trying to act the scene out. And they're just like pretending to fall, maybe laugh. Um, but they escape out of there. The thing almost, you know, chomps them, but they get out. Um, let's see. They end up going to, uh, Bespin, which is where... Uh, Cloud City, Bespin Cloud City. That's where Lando ends up uh, being held up. He is a, um, I think it's a mining planet or something. I'm not really sure exactly. They did mention it, but I just forget what it, what he does exactly. Um, but he's like a big wig on Bespin, or at least this particular part of Bespin. I think they're a mining, some mining for something. Um, and they're apart from the Empire. They have no presence there. Uh, they're kind of doing their own thing, I guess. Trading with people freely, whatever. And Lando is in charge of it. Um, Han shows up. Wants them to help fix his hyperdrive. He can't do it himself or whatever. He's having problems. Or I think he needs a part or something. Um, and uh, Lando, you know, walks up to him. Uh, just, like, just like Han does to him in Solo where Lando's acting like they're best buddies and Han acts all pissed off. And then he's like, oh, come here, and gives him a hug. He does the same shit but reverse to Han this time. And it's the same, uh, you know, Han's like, whoa. <laughs> and then he hugs him. Um, but immediately he takes a liking to uh, Leia. He's, you know, uh, he's he's a player a little bit. At least that's just the vibe I get from him. He's a little bit of a player. Uh, but they, they, you know, they go into the city everything's cool from what he thinks uh c-3po actually ends up going missing you you hear him get shot um and they kind of just forget about him this whole movie c-3po is hilarious like this is the best i love i've always loved c-3po but this is where he shines the most he is uh, pun intended not intended but he's just so funny like everyone is just annoyed with him all the time and he just doesn't stop talking it's so funny it, it makes me laugh every time um i like they don't give a shit about him. It's it's just like, but they do at the same time. It's just he's really funny here. Um, but anyway, he gets shot and they like just leave. They and you know after a while they're like, all right, where's three PO? You know, but like they don't give a shit at first. Chewbacca like looks for him for like a second and then just like, well, yeah, and goes away. <laughs> um, but they uh, everything's smooth, you know, whatever. There's not really many scenes, and then all of a sudden. Um, Lando asks them to go to eat, and Vader's at the table. Uh, and it turns out that somehow Vader, or it was actually from, um, it was from, uh, oh no, my bad, I got it wrong. They got the hyperdrive working again. My bad, they got the, the, the hyperdrive working. Um, and what their plan was, was they stuck on the back of one of the Imperial Star Destroyers. And when they released their trash before they went to hyperspace, they fell off with the trash and just looked like floating trash. And ends up Boba Fett 
I guess, predicted that or something, and he saw him do it, and he followed him and alerted the Empire. Um, so that's why the Empire is on Bespin, um, and because Lando doesn't want the Empire having their fingers in the whole operation, he turns over, you know, Han, Leia, Chewie, um, and, you know, as soon as Vader, they open the door and Vader's there, Han pulls out his blaster and starts shooting him, and Vader literally just goes like this, block, block 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 he like takes the shots to the hand i don't know how he does it it's pretty cool and it's actually something that i don't think i've ever seen in any other star wars movie i, I don't recall that ever happening in any other star wars where he just like like it's not like kylo ren where he stops the bullet which is honestly cooler but he literally lets the bullet hit his hand and nothing happens like i'm not sure if he's like somehow using the force to dissipate it or maybe just because it's hitting the metal it doesn't do anything I'm not 100 percent sure uh, but it's freaking cool, and then he pulls the blaster away, and he says, we'd be honored if you would join us. Um, so basically, they're, you know, Lando turns him over because he doesn't want their fingers in the mining operation. He then decides to, I think he, I don't think this was planned, but he decides that he was wrong. And helps them uh, free Han and, and uh, you know, Leia and Chewie, and the, the, the terms, you know, the terms keep changing, Vader keeps changing the terms, so their agreement, maybe this is why he decides, you know, it's not a good idea, and he turn, changes his mind, because, you know, Chewie and, and Leia were supposed to be able to stay in Bespin, and um, Vader wasn't going to leave a garrison or anything, and then um, Han, what was the deal with, I think Han went with Boba Fett or something, well, that would probably end up killing him, but, um, he ends up changing his mind, and they go and try to save Han. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out. They are able to escape, though. Uh, there's pretty cool fighting in the hallways as well. You know, Boba Fett and uh, the Stormtroopers and Luke's. Luke shows up to try to help them. Um, but uh, Anakin, or Anakin, uh, Leia, Chewie, and C-3PO and R2 are able to escape. Uh... Luke stays and confronts Vader. But before I... Oh, and Han is frozen in carbonite um, and given to Boba Fett. So Boba Fett is able to take Han to Jabba for that reward. And um, the others escape and Luke confronts Vader. But I'm getting ahead of myself. i got to talk about Luke's story here. Like I said, Luke goes to Dagobah. He meets Yoda. Yoda shows up and he's a different Yoda than... Uh, <laughs> than the prequel trilogy for sure um <clears throat> much less serious very you know goofy um very n kind i guess kind and goofy um apparently it was a front to try to figure out how luke was as a person i think um i still don't fully understand that because yoda does like a total 360 like he's not the yoda in in the the you know, the prequels, or that time frame, um, you know, in, like, episode six, he, I mean, Yoda's, in, in the prequels, he was, you know, pretty serious, but he also had, you know, a warm heart, and he could joke around a little bit, or whatever, make a couple jokes, but for the most part, pretty serious, this Yoda is, like, off the rails, you know what I mean, like, he is just, like, he's eating Luke's dinner, and he takes, uh, a little, flashlight thing and he's hitting r2 with a stick like he's just a crazy old man basically but apparently he was doing it to test out i guess how luke was as a person um not 100 percent sure why he did that but that's why i guess um and uh once uh ben kenobi or i'm sorry luke is like you know being kind of like a punk and Yoda just goes, I cannot train him. And then Obi-Wan's talking to him, and he says, was I any different when I was his age or whatever? And, and Yoda just keeps making excuses, and uh, Luke can hear Ben, and, uh, you know, he's, like, pleading his case at this point. Um, uh, excuse me. And he doesn't realize that Yoda is Yoda. He thinks he's just some crazy person that could potentially take him to Yoda, but he wants to, like, eat and talk and shit, and he's like, look, we're wasting our time, we need to get to Yoda. Which is kind of, I guess, a pretty good argument, because his friends 
and the rebellion are like we don't have time for this shit you know what i mean like i i don't really get yoda's motive here i know the jedi are, are you know they're all always calm and and um you know not that they don't worry but they don't let emotion take over and stuff like that so maybe that was why but i don't know it just seemed a little bit now that i'm talking about it it seemed a little bit out of place considering that the you know everything was at stake and all they cared about in the end uh, yoda and and obi-wan was that luke confront vader they didn't even say anything about palpatine they didn't say anything about the rebellion or the empire they just wanted him to confront vader which is kind of i mean vader's a big deal but there's bigger fish to fry you know what i mean um, and they wanted him to stay and train. Luke knew his friends were in danger, uh, probably from he sensed it or something. Um, I probably, I don't know, I don't remember the exact scene, but I'm sure that's what happened. He sensed it. Um, and, uh, he wanted to leave and Yoda, you know, was getting on him about, look, you need to complete your training. You're, you're not ready and everything like that. And, and he's like, that would end up, that would make me sacrifice my friends. And Yoda's like, if you believe for what they fight for, yes, you do that. Um, and Luke just isn't able to do it, which is kind of like an Anakin Skywalker trait in a way. I think he would do the same shit. I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing, really. It's not. It's, I guess, it's against the Jedi Code. This is a different situation, though. I mean, it's not like, you know, he's saving one person and putting a million in danger. He's just trying to save people maybe a little too early than what is you know a little early in his training i guess their their point was he'll die he could die and then that would be it and no one would get saved i'm guessing that's their point um but i don't know it's definitely a jedi way to go i think but it's also a little extreme i don't think that they would uh you know in the prequels or in the, in the tv show i don't think they would mind of you know yoda or uh, luke going and trying to save his friends but and everyone if he was the only one that could do it. Um, and he ends up doing it, uh, for the most part. I mean, well, actually, no, they, they do it, uh, they kind of do. Uh, yeah, he kind of does save them, because R2 saves them and shit, and, uh, yeah, he, he, if he wasn't there, I think they would probably be fucked, but anyways. Um, we get some cool training scenes with Luke and Yoda. Uh, Yoda's backpack to Luke's back, he's running around doing flips and shit, not not nothing too you know too crazy really um i don't know how long they're there it doesn't really give you a time frame i'm sure i could look that up but uh it doesn't in the movie it doesn't say like two days later or like a month later or nothing you really don't know i don't think it's it's probably like a day um so i, I mean this is always in the back of my head all those people who say you know ray never trained i was kind of thinking like well luke didn't really either to be honest because like what he got a little snippet of training with obi-wan on that on uh the millennium falcon with the recon droid and and then like a day of training with yoda you know i mean if you think about it he doesn't really train much either unless it's like some expanded universe shit but i don't know in the movies it doesn't really seem like yoda train or luke trains any more than ray does um but anyways after getting a bunch of bullshit from you know obi-wan and yoda about leaving um Luke leaves and they say there is another Yoda drops that bomb that there's another Skywalker or another hope at least um, and this is where you know skipping a bit but this is where Luke confronts Vader pretty decent fight uh, definitely definitely mm, I think the Obi-Wan versus Darth Vader fights the worst one this is probably uh, the second best fight I think the best fight is the return of the Jedi fight um you know, Luke's style, I was going to say he's a bit unrefined, but in in, in, honest, in all honesty, Luke's style is literally just swinging it like it's a baseball bat or a tennis racket. And that's pretty much, you know, there's not really any re refined re revision to it, I guess is the word. Uh, like the uh, prequels or, or anything like that, it's kind of just swinging wildly. Um, the fight's pretty decent, you know. Uh, there's a funny part where Luke's like fucking climbing on a pipe or something and, and Vader goes, impressive. And then just like, right, they don't give it a, a second to breathe. And as soon as he, it turns to him, he's just slashing at shit. It's fucking hilarious. Um, every time it makes me laugh. It's not supposed to be funny, but for some reason it just makes me laugh. Um, 
Emperor's not here this time. The, the whole plan was for uh, Vader to pull Luke into the Carbonite. Um, there's actually a game, Star Wars Galactic Conquest, I think it is. Uh, something like that. Galactic... Uh, I can't remember, but it's a Game Boy Advance game, and it, it's the f it's actually a really good game. I think I reviewed it on this channel before. I played it a few months back, again, for like the 30th time. Really good game, um, but this fight is pretty fun in that game, where he pulls you into the Carbonite Chamber and tries to freeze you. Um, so that's what he's trying to do, and he's going to take him to the Emperor uh, is his plan, but Luke is able to escape the Carbonite Chamber, and um, uh, Vader ends up cutting his hand off, you know, Luke's actually holding his own for the most part until Vader starts using the Force, and he's just throwing shit at him and hitting him in the head, and Luke's just, like, kind of swinging wildly. It's pretty bad acting, to be honest. Um, and uh, Vader has him down the wire, and he ends up cutting off Luke's hand, reveals that, you know, Vader is Luke's father, and, and Luke just flips out, and honestly, you know, after Vader tries to tell him to join him, mentions we can take over the emperor and emperor and um rule his father and son and then luke just falls off the thing and get, gets saved by han or gets saved by leia and, and lando lando escapes with them as, as well i forgot to mention gets saved by lando chewbacca c-3po and um uh, Le uh leia i think and lando i you know i mean they uh save him and you know, they, they make a plan to save Han, and that's how it ends. Um, so, really, really good. Uh, there's, you know, it has its quirks, but I think it's really good. Um, I really like the Hoth scenes. I really like the Dagobah scenes. I really like the Vader with Luke scenes a lot. Um, some of the stuff, maybe it was drug on a little bit with the asteroid shit, maybe. Uh, but for the most part, I like the adventure of, uh, you know, Han, Leia, Chewbacca, and the crew. Um, like I said, C-3PO is hilarious. It, like, a, he got shot, and then Chewbacca tries to, you know, fix him, and he puts his head on backwards, and he calls him, like, an overgrown mop head and stuff. It's just, it's fucking hilarious. And uh, he's talking to R2, and he's like, I look true in one piece, look at me! And it's just like, it's fucking, C-3PO is hilarious to me. Um... Lando is a great addition to the cast. I really like him. Um, like I said, he's like a smooth operator type character. Um, he's got a bit of that smuggler mentality. Not yet. He's not necessarily a smuggler, um, but you know, he's kind of like the scum of the scum of the universe type guy. Just kind of like um, Han, and they do a good job of. of he's kind of basically so, similar to Han, and, and he's a little more smooth smooth than Han. Han's a little more bumpy or rough. But, uh, you know, similar characters where they both, you know, for the most part, try to do for themselves. But in reality, deep down, they know they're the good guy, right? So pretty similar characters. I like both of them. I think they play off of each other well. Um, and Leia is great as well. You know, she doesn't really have as much to do here. She's kind of, you know, I guess her focus would be the Han and Leia love thing where, you know, they're back and forth and they kiss at one point And, you know, I guess that's really her big part here. And then when she's able to uh, hear Luke calling for her through the Force, um, would I guess be her other big thing. Uh, Luke gets a lot here. You know, you get to really dive into Luke's character where before it was, you know, Luke was a character involved in everything going on in A New, in a new Hope. Um, but he wasn't like the main focus, I would say. I, I, I mean, maybe Han would even be more focused and... and maybe even Ben at some parts, where Luke was there, don't get me wrong, and he was definitely featured in a few scenes, but he wasn't, like, the main character. But in this one, he's, you know, it's, it's known that Luke is basically, you know, the main guy here. He gets half the movie to himself, with Yoda, of course, but, um, you know, and uh, you, he, you know, he slowly becomes a little more dialed in, you know what I mean? Like, in the first one, he's just, he's, you know, he's just... 17 whatever 18 year old kid is basically what he is he's you know wide-eyed not really a, i guess not obnoxious would be the right word but you know just kind of outspoken and sometimes says stupid shit but in this one he's a little more dialed back from that a little more calculated definitely not uh the luke from episode six um which is my favorite version of luke but he's you know progressively getting better which he should do it shouldn't just be a Oh, suddenly, you know, he was an, a freaking 10-year-old, now he's 30. Like, it doesn't really work like that, and, and I like how they progressed it for him. So, 
Also, the uh, Hoth fights, awesome. Love the AT-ATs, love the little speeders. That's a great idea. I thought it all looked great. Um, uh, we didn't get too, too much Rebels after that, really. But, um, yeah, and, and the fight was pretty decent as well. So, for this one, I'm going to give uh, Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back. It's going to get a 9 for me. Um, yeah, one of my favorites for sure. Um, I've always had a really soft spot spot in my heart for uh, Return of the Jedi, but I think this is the best one, like the best movie. You know, it may not be my favorite of the three, but it's my, it's the best. I think it's the best one out of the, the three of them. So, uh, Star Wars Episode Five, Episode V. Uh, I never knew that when I was a kid what that meant, so I was like Episode V. <laughs> I was like ten. Um, Empire Strikes Back is a 9 out of 10. Thank you for watching.